Let's talk about benevolence, shall we? Oh, Lord. He wants to talk about something that he doesn't know anything about. Grab the popcorn. Watching him crash and burn should be good. When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. Contrary to what some may think, benevolence is not something foreign to me just because I'm not a Bernie bro social democrat. I'm not alone in that either. Many of my good friends are genuinely benevolent people and conservative as well. Nah, folks, I understand what benevolence is. Honestly, I'm not certain that so many people who are progressives do. There's an old adage which just about anyone in the western world can recognize. Give a man a fish and he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish and he eats for a lifetime. Let's take a close look at these words. Giving a man a fish is giving him a meal. That is benevolent because you are meeting his immediate need. Teaching him to fish meets a different need, his need to provide for himself. Quite simply, if all you do is give him a meal, then you have not solved the cause of his hunger. He didn't have any food, true, but that isn't the cause of his hunger. The real cause isn't that he didn't know how to get a fish for himself. Solve the problem, and he will get his own fish. He will probably show other people how to fish in turn. Bingo! Freaking Yahtzee! The one guy who can catch his own fish now has fed himself and his family and spread his knowledge to others so that they too can feed themselves and their families. So really... You are feeding more than just one person by teaching him how to get his own fish. In time you fed hundreds, perhaps thousands, by teaching him how to fish. Or maybe you just fed one person. That's not a bad thing either, because so long as he can fish he doesn't need to stress about it. That's one less fish that you have to catch every day. How is that a bad thing exactly? That's really the difference between progressivism and populism. Both progressives and populists prefer that everyone has a fish. Progressives maintain that the hungry man should have all the help that he needs to eat, to have a place to stay, to pay bills, etc. Populists believe that giving him a decent job, be it a trade or something which requires a college education to do, lets him purchase his own damn fish. Another difference is that both progressives and populists deal with the immediate need of hunger. Both are giving the man a fish. Progressives are giving him a fish taken from someone who has plenty of fish. Populists give the hungry guy their own fish, not someone else's fish. That means the donor of the fish has the choice if and when he or she will give up the fish. Populists tend to be much more concerned with personal responsibility than progressives. This is a fundamental difference in mindset, folks. While progressives emphasize collective responsibility for social ills, populists believe that each person bears the burden of dealing with their own problems first. That's why progressives and populists don't see eye to eye about the solutions to many of the problems that exist in America. Does the populist belief in personal responsibility mean that they are less benevolent? Um, no. Just... No. Not every problem requires outside help to solve, and not all help is actually a solution to the problem. Let's start with the example of a child. Children cannot provide for themselves, they cannot be expected to know all the rules of society or how to manage their own lives. When they grow up, though, they will have to provide for themselves, they will have to live within the rules of society, and they will have to manage their own lives. The responsible thing to do is to feed them, clothe them, and care for them. The responsible thing to do is to set boundaries and to enforce those boundaries so that they will learn the limits of what is acceptable behavior. The responsible thing to do is to set them small tasks in order to teach them how to be diligent and how to take care of their basic responsibilities like household chores. As they grow older, 
They will learn the basics and the parents can move on to more complicated adult responsibilities. Properly raised kids grow up into fully self-actualized adults who don't need or want a caregiver. Instead, they provide caregiving to others, including their own kids, when the time comes. What about those who have fallen on hard times? Certainly, they need help, right? Yes, but the best way to help people in need is to help them to help themselves. A temporary hand up to someone who is struggling is different than a perpetual handout, especially when the handout is given to someone who is perfectly capable of gaining the ability to provide for themselves. That's why the first, most benevolent step toward dealing with poverty is to ensure that there are plenty of jobs available for people, not plenty of resources provided by the government. Those resources cost money, and there have to be practical limits to prevent endless exploitation of the social safety net by the indigent. See, Roast, you don't understand benevolence at all. You don't want people to have the help when they need it, and you think the government doesn't have a responsibility to its people. Is it benevolence if it's compulsory? When I choose to help someone, that's benevolence. When someone chooses for me that I will help others, that's taxation. When someone forces me to help no matter what my personal wishes are, that's certainly not benevolence on their part. Benevolence is seeing a need and meeting it out of your own resources. It's sharing with others about the need in order to make a collective effort to meet the need and reduce the individual burden on meeting that need. In the age of social media, I believe the phrase for this is crowdfunding. Crowdfunding someone out of a difficult financial spot is a great idea. When I cannot donate money to such efforts, and trust me that happens more often than not, then I can still spread the word about the effort and give of my time to help. That way we can all help each other out like family and friends are supposed to do. When I start to get a little leery of pitching in and helping is when the same person asks for the same help over and over again. That doesn't mean that I refuse to help, it means that I honestly consider whether the help which I provide is the kind of help which they most need. If they are winding up in the same jam, then I have to wonder if the cause for this is a problem that needs to be solved. The most benevolent thing to do is to help them solve the problem. Really, really. That may mean that you have to tell them no when they ask for money sometimes. It depends on why they are in the financial bind over and over again. Is it because they are a single parent struggling to make ends meet on a tight budget while raising their kids and improving their job prospects? Or is it because they spent too much money at the bar again trying to hook up with that cutie in the corner and can't pay their rent now? Giving some financial support to the single parent so that they can finish night school and land a better job is benevolent, even if it happens frequently. In the other instance, the most benevolent thing to do is to help that person to learn how to budget better, and that might just mean letting them get kicked out of their apartment. How is that benevolence? Failure is an excellent teacher, and sometimes the quickest way to learn is to fall flat on your face. Learning a lesson fast is better than learning it slowly. Not all pain can be avoided, and there are many instances where a short, sharp pain is much less pain in the long run than a protracted, dull pain. Sometimes the most benevolent thing that you can do is rip the band-aid off quickly. Now that's just my opinion, and you don't have to agree with me. In fact, I'd love to hear what you think, so go ahead and give me a like or dislike and comment below. If you like this content and want to see more, feel free to subscribe and make sure that you ring the notification bell. New episodes of Roasted Opinions post on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Central Time. Join me on the last Saturday of every month for my special In the Kitchen episodes. New content is coming, so watch this space.